Hi, this is Jake Holden, and I'm going to be doing my movie review on the movie Get Out, directed by Jordan Peele. Uh, we're looking at this movie under the lens of uh, imagination, modified reality, paranoia, and credibility of our fears. So under this uh, perspective, we're kind of looking at how his fear is um, perceived through the film by others. Uh, Chris is the main character. So for the first prompt, it asks... Um, we are often told that our fears are in our heads. We've been made, we've made them up. If that is systemized, we may begin to believe those who tell us nothing is wrong, that we have nothing to fear. What if we do? How will our fears respond when they are given credence? How will they serve us in an environment where our instincts were right after all? So, um, in response to this, you kind of have to look at first how his fears are reacted to in the film. So, the first example that I have is. Um, when they're packing to go to his girlfriend's parents' house. Chris is an African-American male, and his girlfriend is white. And I think they've only been dating for a few months. So this is the first time he's going to meet her parents, and he's nervous to be leaving um, the city to go up to a place he's never been to, to meet people he's never met and stay there. Um, he asks her, do her parents even know that he's black? And she says, no, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, my dad's not racist, my family's not racist, they, they don't care anyways. And so she kind of pushes this fear off. And this is one that I think is um, more understandable uh, in the beginning. You're like, okay, that, that's nothing big, you know, it's something anybody would do. You know, no, it doesn't matter you're black, or it doesn't matter, like, they don't, they're not racist. They won't, they won't care. They're not prejudiced. Um, but as the film goes on, we can see this kind of build up more and more. So the second example I have, I'm sure there's more in between this, but... The big one I noticed is when um, she goes to the lake and he comes with her. They go on a walk to the lake. Um, and he says that he doesn't feel comfortable and he wants to leave. And she makes this big scene about him wanting to abandon her and leave and go back. And she doesn't want to be left there with her family. And she thinks he should stay. And when he says that she can come with him, she acts like everything is all right. So a little bit of uh, manipulation there and how she pushes that off that he wants to leave and he's not comfortable because it, it's going to hurt her feelings. The uh, third thing, third example um, in this pushing off of fears is when he is noticing the groundskeepers and he even says well, that they're all black and this is a white family and the dad um, kind of acknowledges this first by saying, you know, I know how it looks, but, you know, we didn't want to fire them. They came to us, and it's not, like, anything to do with slavery. So don't even think about that because that's not what it is. And then as it goes on, he talks to these people, and he recognizes that they're not, uh, like, the people he may know of color. And so he starts to be weirded out by this, and he's basically told to ignore it, you know, they're just, they're just different. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so this is another part where his um, kind of concerns are disregarded. And um, he is justified in this at the end because this is a environment where his fears were justified all along. And he can see at the end how he doesn't lose his cool. He knows basically when going into the... Uh, final 30 minutes of the movie but when they're about to leave um, from the house he knows that something is wrong and he is prepared for it because he knows that he trusts his fears and he trusts his instincts um, and the next question is uh, be a counter example what are the consequences of us letting our imaginations run away with us what if there is no danger nothing to fear and we accuse lash out when it is unwarranted an example of this is kind of seen with his best friend um, that works for the TSA. He goes to the police. He goes to the police to um, report his friend missing, and the police just assumes that nothing is wrong. And they, she bring the uh, female officer brings in uh, two more officers, and they just laugh at him and you know tell him that uh, he looks dumb and. She brought them in there to laugh at him. And so um, 
she uh they think that he's kind of unintelligent or not stable or that he's making it up so it kind of can be seen as like embarrassment if like you lash out and it's not warranted um especially for something like this they're like oh why is he even suggesting this his friend's 26 he's only been gone for two days there's no reason to be worried um, and then for C, are the repercussions for A and B different for different people based on what? Explain. So um, I think in this we have to look at race for this movie. Um, this whole experience happens because Chris is black and his girlfriend Rose and her family are white. Um, he feels uncomfortable because of his race. He is happy to see other um african-americans there and he tries to talk to him and he realizes they're not like the people he knows from home um and so the repercussions because he's black and he thinks this they all just kind of brush it off they say oh like they're just trying not to be racist and that's why they're sounding racist or they're they're not used to black people so they're saying these things because they think it'll make you feel more comfortable but if he was white none of this would ever happened like there wouldn't be a miscommunication um and the whole movie is kind of based on this point so it's not something you can really compare because this is happening this is happening because he's black so you can kind of see how this can't be interchanged but in real life you know if there is a minority group that is scared for a good reason then they may be seen as uh you know, scared or non-trusting. And as a, like, majority group, you know, you'd say, oh, I don't get that. I don't get why they're so scared. Uh, in class, we talked about this Tus Tuskegee project, or uh, experiments, rather, where African-American men were um, experimented on for syphilis, I think it was. Um, and how they uh, have, uh, as a community, the African-Americans have kind of stopped just trusting what the government says. And we can kind of see that in this movie, how there's a minority that comes into this majority white um, system situation, and he's hesitant, and he's giving these clues. Uh, he's giving, uh, his instincts are telling him basically something is wrong. And um, overall, I know we're not supposed to say this, but I love this movie. I thought it was a great example. Um, I'd watched it before four years ago and then just recently rewatched it for this project or for this uh, assignment, rather. And I just blown away. It's great. So thanks for uh, watching if you made it to the end and uh, see you later.